Hello fellow colorists, welcome back to the channel, J.I. Colorist. My name is Jody, and I'm thrilled to have you here today for what is uh, my most favorite video of the month, and that is going over my completed pages. I enjoy watching my fellow uh, YouTube colorists, uh, their completed pages, so I hope you enjoy today's. I am sitting here looking out my window right now, and it is raining hard on a blustery August 28th and it is uh, definitely giving the ground a much needed drink of water but it also means that uh, I actually had to turn my furnace on for the first time in months so uh, if you hear my furnace running I apologize for that but it is Canada and uh, yeah it does get cold here when there's no sun and it's raining so I'll move this out of the way I just uh, I really like that uh, this little desk ornament that I have. It's more fun to color outside the lines and uh, I think that coloring should be fun if at all possible. So we're going to flip to the August and this is my coloring uh, day timer where I just keep track of all of the items that I plan to do, uh, some of the research I've done and then all of the completed uh, pages and the materials I've used on each page. So I will refer to that a little bit, but uh, just going over a few stats, uh, the pages I completed is 19. So I forgot to write that in, so I'll write that in. I did five buddy pages out of those 19. I am currently working on a craft, but I didn't include it right here. It is a 30 by 30 um, diamond painting and so perhaps I will get a bit more of that done this afternoon after filming this video. I did seven videos. I'm going to release this video on September the 1st uh, unless I release it a day early on the 31st but I'm going to call it as seven videos for the month and I participated in nine hashtags. So I want to also take the time this month to welcome 35 new subscribers. We have hit uh, 2,502 subscribers here in August of 2024. So uh, really happy to have hit that milestone. But I also recognize that last month I did not ask for people to subscribe if they wanted to. I was kind of doing a test whether or not uh, asking for people to subscribe works and apparently it does because this is the least amount of subscriber growth that we've had in many many months so once a month I'm gonna go back to uh, asking you if you enjoy the content you see on my channel and you want to be notified of when new videos are coming out so that you can participate in all of the series that I'm doing uh, then please consider subscribing it's free to you and it does help the channel grow okay that's my once a month pitch for subscribers. I don't uh, ask every every video. Um, I find it personally annoying when people ask. So um, yeah, this is just how I run my channel. I am also hosting Olympic Coloring 2024 hashtag and on screen I will show you a picture of that, um, giving you details on what it's all about. Uh, we do have until September the 8th. So if you have not already participated or you want to participate again, uh, there's no limit to how many times you can participate participate in the hashtag. And I would love to see uh, you join in the fun. And you can either email me directly at jicolors at gmail.com or tag me on Instagram and uh, use the hashtag. So excited. Uh, of what we were able to accomplish. I was able to get back to two videos a week for the last three weeks. So I think we are settling here at the <laughs> at the acreage into a more reasonable rhythm and we are able to get back to two videos a week. So I'm excited for that. So let's take a look at uh, what we've done and get back to the books. I'm going to, as per usual, do my books in order of a size so that I'm adjusting the camera as least as possible. So that means I'm going to start with my small books and then I'm going to uh, keep moving up to bigger and bigger books. All right, let me 
make sure that we're totally in frame. Okay, here we are. This is A Million Cute Animals by Lulu Mayo, and you know it's a project book. For me, I have 11 pages left at the end of August, and I did three pages in the month of August. So let's turn to the first one. Okay, so this was not a double page spread. Uh, I did this one back in February 2023, so over a year ago, and uh, this is the page that I completed this month. In order to do this page, um, I wanted similar colors, but I also kind of wanted it to be like a timeline. Like this looks like kind of when they were dating or getting married. And this looks like when they've been settled into married life for a while and they have a family uh, with a little uh, fox guy. So those are kind of wanted to bring in some of the same colors, but a little bit younger. And I also wanted a different background. Uh, so they're both blue and I used some of the colors over here to kind of tie the two pages together. I used a Stedler pigment pen for the background. Uh, and that is a water-based pen, so it did not bleed through. I then used some, all on the green leaves, I used a Spectrum North Sage pen. Uh, so that's this here, which is kind of like Winkostella, only with color. Um, and as long as you do a light coat, it doesn't bleed through. But if you do a, uh, go over it a few times, it will bleed through. I also used the Stedler Pigment Pen in peach to do the solid colors and that was starting to bleed through so I only did it on the flowers um, the odd flower and then I used uh, the four candies pencils for the other flowers and I used three different colors on the uh, these multicolored flowers here but I thought that they went together quite well with the uh, peach and I selected the colors as contrast colors so the peach and the blue uh, go together. I used Stedler pigment pen on the little extra animals and over here this guy here I used a different color blue background because I wanted him to kind of stand out a little bit so and then I used for all the vines I used a jelly roll metallic uh, green I used the bleed proof white for all these dots and I used the end of my paintbrush to make the dots. So I dipped my paintbrush into the uh, PH Martin bleed proof white, which is just a little uh, jar. And yeah, and then once I was done with everything, I wanted a little bit of glitz to the page. As you can see, there's some shimmer on it. And all I did was take a sponge uh, applicator I'll show you what I mean. I took this applicator and used the tip of it and uh, shook up my Glitter Mod Podge Extreme. And just using the amount of the cap, uh, dipping it in, I put some all over, not, not on top of the colored areas, but just on the background to uh, give it a bit of sparkle. And I like how it turned out. Both the metallic gel pen on kind of gives it like a moonlit glow to the vines. So yeah, I think that the pages go well together and I'm happy with how it turned out. Okay, the next page in here was, I did this page for the blue moon, super moon video that I did earlier uh, this month. And I have used a variety of uh, mediums on this page as well. There is a video on my channel of how I completed this. And in this case, in this video, I pretty much did the whole page with you um, in different chunks. So um, quite often I'll only do a portion of a page and then go away and do the rest and come back with a final picture. But at this time I did pretty much the whole page with you. I used metallic gelatos for the blue clouds here. I used uh, Paul Rubin's watercolor paint for the blue moon. I used glossy accents for the eyes. 
I used the Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen for the trees. I used more watercolor on the water down below and I used some Stedler pigment pens as well as the four candies pencils and on top of the uh, little birdie pom hair I'm not sure why she always puts pom-poms on these birds heads but I did that in some Windsor Newton iridescent medium I believe let me just confirm that yes Windsor Newton iridescent medium and I then used some white gelato at the end to kind of make everything glow a little bit. Um, I was originally going to do blue, uh, a blue haze around it. However, uh, there was already a lot of blue on the page and I thought maybe I would go with the white and see how that would. So there's kind of some white glittery. It was the iridescent gelato and I think it worked out. There's some also on the water here. So you have to move the page in order to see it. So sorry if that makes you sick, but uh, happy with how this page turned out. Uh, it was fun looking up some moon facts and uh, some moon trivia. So I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you haven't had a chance to watch it yet, I uh, encourage you to go back and watch it. Okay, one final page for this month. And that is the strawberry cake page and this was a fun page that I wanted to just uh, cut loose and have a little bit of fun I did use some watercolor mediums on this page and that is uh, the icing areas I used the Spectrum Noir sparkle pen this is the color linen and it's quite sparkly and it's nice I uh, used also a gold jelly roll metallic and then the watercolors that I used was the Paul Rubens watercolor. And then I've got some washi tape here. I stamped these uh, balloons on and then I used both uh, watercolor on top and then a gel pen. And I think it turned out pretty good. I used a few Stedler pigment pens and my uh, four candies and a pit pens, some jelly rolls. Yeah, just a fun lighthearted page. The, um, this here, this icing here is also the Spectrum Noir. I have the Spectrum Noir uh, stuff all sitting on my desk uh, in here. So I do am reaching for these more often uh, when I'm in a book that is double sided because for the most part, they won't bleed through. Um, as long as you're not heavy handed. So there is my third page in A Million Cute Animals. I want to insert here uh, a page that was completed last month. And that's because I have a buddy uh, who was able to finish her page now and it was coloring Bumblebee and she finished her page and I believe she has a video on her channel of her doing this page so um, by all means go check it out this is the page that I did and on screen you will see the page uh, that coloring Bumblebee did um, I love her uh, her colors that she chose we had a few similar colors which was kind of cool to see uh, that kind of the same uh, color palette is where we were going with but uh, I love how her page turned out and I just want to thank her for participating in the buddy color with me and uh, thank you for submitting your page. All right, on to the next book. The next book by size is Sea of Colors by Angela Gonzalez. This is also a book on my list of uh, five books to finish. I also have been uh, doing some buddy colors in this book. I also participate in the group color along with Amanda Colors channel. However, I'm going to start with my buddy color. And uh, so this page was a page selected by Sherry Denowitz, who is my buddy. And we have already selected some pages for next month to do. Um, she gave me a couple of choices of pages and uh, I selected this one. I think it's an adorable page. I love her bright, colorful colors. The uh, purple and orange uh, really went well. So uh, thank you, Sherry, for coloring with me. And I look forward 
to coloring again uh, next month with you. I'll show you my page. So this is my page and you can see that we used a few similar colors. So we both used an orange uh, kind of uh, coral picture there and we both had some blue here. So it was actually a, a fun look that we had a few of the similar colors um, on our pages. So side by side, it kind of is a, a cute, cute coincidence. So I used the four candies pencils and uh, sparkle pop uh, gel pens and also some gelatos. So I used gelato for the background and a couple of uh, colors and I went over this multiple times and happy with how it turned out. When I mentioned four candies pencils, um, they're the mechanical pencil and I'll just grab them to show you. So these are what I call the four candies because it says four candies there. And these are the mechanical pencils and they come with refills. And yeah, there it's quite a waxy pencil, which is uh, uh, good in, and there's 36 colors. So not a lot of colors, but they're easy to, to grab and uh, color. They color well on cheap paper, which is um, why I have used them in this book because uh, my expensive pencils don't seem to uh, color as well. And so you might as well just use up some of your cheaper supplies on this uh, lovely paper. So that's the first page from this book. The next page we did is this page. And this is for Amanda Colors uh, last month. Uh, this was her group color long for July. I uh, was busy doing one book July, so I did not uh, participate. So I just catching up. So this is uh, her the note page. And that again, I used the four candies pencils and some pit artist pens. And a little bit of uh, glitter here, so that would have been a gel pen. So just a fun, cute, quick page. And the next page, this is the Amanda Colors uh, August group color long page. And this time, I wanted, it was a lot of fish on here and fish are all under the water. So I decided to put some Daniel Smith uh, watercolor ground on it first so that I could actually use watercolor uh, papers on it. I used my Faber-Castell Albrechter watercolor markers, some pit pens, some Stadler pit pens, gel pens, and then at the end I used some glitterific paint and uh, put it on the bottom so that there is a little bit of a uh, sparkle on the sea floor. And I used a few gel pens on some of the fish so you can see them. But yeah, I really enjoyed using the watercolor markers. They were the first time I had used them because I purchased them in July. So I, I thought they went well and I'll just show you what they look like. So here is the watercolor markers, the Faber-Castell Albrechter, and uh, they have a large brush tip on one end, and which is the one I used most of the time, and then they have a bullet end on the other. And you use them and then you um, can take a water brush and uh, move them around. And because I had used the Daniel Smith watercolor paper, or transparent ground on the paper itself, uh, you could actually move them like watercolor. So uh, really happy with how this page turned out. And the glitter glitterific paint, I'm trying to uh, use up and get rid of because it's actually uh, very thick and hard to uh, paint with. So you actually, um, it works best for me to put it on with like a silicone tipped tool or a palette knife because uh, yeah, it's more like glitter glue than anything else. And this is the Folk Art Glitterific Paint and it's called Tropical. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend getting this again. It uh, really is like glue. So it's not like paint at all. I have tried using water to like thin it out and stuff. Um, somebody else um, suggested that on a palette, um, but yeah. Not my favorite, 
but it is effective in what I was wanting to accomplish on this page and I'm happy with how the page turned out. Like the colors that I chose anyways. So that was the last uh, page. So there's three done this month out of Sea of Colors. I have 17 pages left in this book and uh, we are still hoping to uh, finish it off sometime in 2024. The next book we have by size is the Kawaii Tarot Coloring Book by Lulu Mayo and I have been following along uh, Happy Catastrophes uh, Color the Tarot. Um, I have caught up and uh, I think I've actually even gone a little bit past um, so let's check out the pages that I have done. This page here is the strength page and I did this as a buddy color with Amy and Amy has a channel here on YouTube so I will link her channel below check her out and I'll just show you Amy's page as well. Amy's page she went with a metallic background and uh, she was trying a bunch of different things on her page. I love how her Monstera plant turned out. She wasn't very happy with how her page turned out but uh, that's the whole thing about coloring is sometimes you have a plan and it uh, either totally works out and sometimes uh, it doesn't work out the way you thought but I still think it was uh, it's a fun page and I thank her for participating in a body color with me so thanks Amy and we will do another page uh, together soon. This is how my page turned out and we'll start off with the fact that I used a gold washi tape for around the edge. All of these uh, have borders around the cards and so I've been trying to uh, uh, do something a little bit different around each border every month um, but I do like how the gold looks so I've selected gold. For the background I used uh, Pit Artist pens and Stadler pigment pens. I used some Uniball metallic uh, for dots all over my uh, Monstera plant and I used Spectrum Noir brush pens and some glossy accents for the eyes and the pencils that I used were polychromos. So I've got uh, glossy accents on his eye there and then the cat's eyes. So I like the colors um, that I ended up using. I, there was a lot of leaves on here so trying to have different colors on the leaves was a little bit and I'm, I've never owned a Monstera plant so um, I probably didn't do it correct but uh, this is how mine looks. Happy with the colors. Used a little bit of gel pen as accents everywhere and on these leaves they actually have uh, the Studler pigment pen and the Pit Artist pens so I've got purple around the outside and then green on the inside just to kind of bring the purple and the green together. It's just feeling really purple this month so I like how this turned out. So thanks Amy and I look forward to doing another page with you soon. Okay the next page that I did in this book is this page and this is Justice and this time I did not use washi tape. I used a aqua what I thought was a water based pen but ended up being an alcohol based pen. So after I used it at that one spot um, just on the outside I stopped and switched to a different pen. So this is Justice and I used Stedler pigment pens, some pit pens, the aqua marker, <laughs> the polychromos for pencils, Jelly Roll, Uniball, Metallic and some Dollar Tree Gold. I also used the Spectrum Nord brush pens and then I also took out the Artex paint pens and I used a little bit here and there for the paint pens on the on the clouds and on uh, this here. So I stuck to a limited color palette but I really like how it turned out. I like the background which is a pit artist pen. I've got a uh, dark uh, like a light black here and then a dark blue here and I think it uh, think it worked out really well. 
I was having a lot of fun using the Spectrumor brush pens this month and uh, also a bunch of the really using a lot of Jelly Roll Metallic lately. So I love I love the colors. I think it does look like a I was going for a circus kind of color palette and I like how that turned out. So this is Justice. The next two pages in the Kawaii Tarot are further along in the book and they were selected by uh, my buddy colorist Maureen and Maureen and I have buddy colored just once before so this is uh, we're getting to know each other a little bit more and it's been great chatting back and forth to her. So we did two buddy colors. We did the Ace of Coins and the Two of Coins. So first off here is Maureen's Ace of Coins and she has gone quite a long further in the book uh, and she is uh, planning on completing her book. I love the bright colors that she used. Uh, her dog looks so super cute and I like how she did her bushes so that uh, may help me figure out how to do my bushes a little bit differently in the future. She is also picking a color palette for each uh, series of cards so this is the color palette for her ace of coins and i will also show you her uh, two of coins as well um, before i show you mine and yeah hers totally cute i love the way she's done her waves and uh, i love that uh, she wasn't happy with the ball um, in that it wasn't as sparkly as she planned for it to be but i think it looks great and uh, I love the color choices that she used. So thank you very much, Maureen, for uh, buddy coloring with me and uh, getting to know you a little bit more through our emails back and forth. And let me show you mine. We'll start off with the Ace of Coins here. And I have selected to do blue and orange. And here's how I did uh, my, I'll just zoom you in a little bit. And the mediums that I used are Stedler pigment pens, polychromos pencils, again, Uniball metallic. So this Ace of Coins here symbol is on all of the Ace of Coin, all, all of the coins uh, tarot cards. So I wanted it to stand out. So this is black glaze and then a uh, metallic gold pe gel pen. And I used that and some other metallic golds or metallic pens on the rest. For the sky, I used both um, the pencils and then some gel pens on the clouds. So I did like one color on the bottom of the cloud and a different color on top because I wanted kind of a different, uh, like a sunset or sunrise uh, color. With We've had quite a few colorful skies lately um, and I really wanted to kind of capture that so and then I did a little bit of uh, glitter on the actual mountain so there's some snow and it kind of glitters down so yeah just fun I like how my hand actually turned out and uh, so this is my ace of coins and then on the next page zoom you out a bit this is my two of coins I ended up using the uh, gelatos for and some Paul Rubens metallic paint so on my ball there's metallic paint and so there's a bit of shine I used a glaze for this infinity symbol and then now we have two coins so again the coins are black glaze and uh, a gold gel pen and I went ahead and did a couple of uh, the glaze spots on the next few pages so that I, I wouldn't run out of the glaze pen by the time I get back to this area of the book. I used the Stedler pigment pens like I mentioned on the uh, different spots and then I used metallic paint for the juggling balls to match kind of down here the same colors and a little bit of on the waves. And then again I did a multicolored sky in the background and I tried to have the sky kind of blend in with the rest. Uh, this is pigment pen down here 
and the bottom if you notice on both of these so I've got washi tape around the top and then the bottom is a little bit thicker of an area so I actually used pigment pen for the bottom of both sides so I used washi tape around the top three and then a pigment pen down below and this here is gelato so I've really been using up a lot of my different supplies this month and I've been having a lot of fun with the multimedia kind of effect and no bleed through which is you know very important when you're working on a double-sided book and so those are my two buddy color pages with Maureen for the month so thank you very much Maureen the next book is a page I completed from Lovely Things a Kauai Tarot coloring book and this is the uh, book uh, from Amanda Colors and I just did this page here I had started this page uh, when I was reviewing the book um, and I had done some of the stars using the Sharpie uh, paint pens and I just wanted to go and have some fun coloring one day um, and I used went back and pulled those out I also pulled out some glitter uh, to make our little unicorn there sparkly so yeah I just wanted to finish this page off and have some fun and do some rainbows and I think it turned out really cute so thanks Amanda for uh, producing such a cute light-hearted coloring book uh, so yeah I used the Equaline brush pens, some Sharpie paint pens, and some Stabilo 68 markers, fine liners. And this is the result. And that's from Lovely Things. The next book is Hannah Carlson's Grains of Gold. And this is the book I've been using as part of my uh, Gems Birthstones uh, coloring series. Okay, this is the page we completed for this month. And we used a couple of things on this page, but we started off with the Sarah Renee Clark uh, color palette 193. And the color that the uh, gem that we did this month for August Burstone was the Peridot. And I used some ink tents, some Zig Clean Color, some Stardust Clear gel pen. And we then at the end covered things with this triple thick. And if you're not familiar with that, that is a Deco Art uh, Triple Think, and it's a brilliant brush on gloss glaze. And it is similar to glossy accents, but doesn't require quite as much precision. I also use some yellow stickles. But yeah, this is ink tense for the most part, and some, so the uh, Zig Clean Color. So that looks like these ones here with the fine, fine brush. And I just noticed that I didn't do all these little uh, spots. And that's because uh, that's part of the background. And what I plan on doing is when I get this page done, I want the backgrounds to uh, go together. So I've left it for now. Um, I don't consider this a whip. I still consider this a completed page, but I probably will come back uh, when I do this page and add more background so um, if if and when I do this page and uh, you may see this page change a bit but for now I'm considering this done there is a complete video on how I uh, did this and every gemstone so far we're up to eight now so we've got quite a playlist going on and I'm looking forward to the September gemstone and uh, I hope you are too so that is my page from grains of gold Sticking with a series that I'm doing, uh, we are also doing the Zodiac Animals of the Year uh, each month. And so May, sorry, August was Leo the Lion. And so I selected uh, this for the lion itself, but the rest of the page I used Hogwarts colors for the Gryffindor house. So this is how this page comes together. And I must say, I'm really happy with how this page turned out. Let me just raise the camera up. There is a complete video on how I did this page. I uh, used lots of mediums on it. I used some Copic Chow markers, some Stedler pigment pens, some Pit Adders pens, Unibow Gold, for I put gold in a lot of spots, and some Moonlight Purple. So the palette 459 
was from uh, box number two. And I am not a um, uh, marker person, um, so here's where all the marker uh, was, which is strictly on the line and the main, and the rest is done uh, with pigment or uh, water-based items. So a lot of the gold is on the, uh, I used a Stedler pigment pen, and then I went over all of the spots that were on these flowers in gold, and I was just, the gold and burgundy uh, came together from the Hogwarts colors. So we had a lot of fun uh, doing some uh, trivia from tr Trivial Pursuit for the uh, Harry Potter edition. So if you are a Harry Potter fan and think you know a lot about uh, Harry Potter, then go back and watch this video and play along with the uh, trivia and see how you do. But yeah, really happy with this. And this might be one of my favorite pages for the month. Okay. That is Astrology Coloring by Anna Jaren. And it's is pretty much a single-sided book. And uh, I just got it at the beginning of this year and I've already colored in it quite a few times. So really happy with the quality of that book. Sticking with a large size book, since we are zoomed out, this is Nature's Sweet Moments by Jane Madey. And I had a buddy color page in this with the beautiful Bee Cozy. And uh, I have her page, so I'll show you her page first. We did this page for the Owl Awareness Day on August the 4th. And uh, both Bee and I love owls. So when she approached me to talk to me about this a few months ago, I was definitely uh, in agreement with it. You can see Bee's uh, more explanation of her page on her completed pages video, but she used some glitter on the wings and stuff. It's got some really pretty detail on the banding on her owl. And uh, thank you very much Bee for participating in this fun Owl Awareness Day and for showing uh, your skills at coloring an owl. I do have a video on this uh, and we also go over some owl facts. The owl actually, the great horned owl, is actually Alberta's provincial bird. So I uh, really enjoy owls and this is how my page turned out. And you can see how this all kind of came together. But I used paint for the background in acrylic paint from Meaden, and then I used some treasure gold sponged on top of that. I used polychromos pencils. I used watercolors. Uh, <laughs> there's pretty much everything on this page, and then uh, glossy accents on the eyes. And I used some uh, jelly roll metallic. So yeah, really happy. And uh, the only time it bled through the page is when I had the paint going on and uh, a little bit heavy. I love how he turned out. I had a lot of fun doing this and I had a lot of fun researching uh, more facts about owls. Uh, we personally have a number of uh, taxidermied owls here at our house. Um, so owls are definitely one of my favorite birds. So thank you so much again B for suggesting this page uh, and glad we did it together as a buddy color. Okay. That is my one page from Nature Sweet Moments by Jane Madey. I am hosting a hashtag, uh, hashtag Olympic Coloring 2024, which is going on for the entire Olympic series. So we've got the Olympics that have already happened and currently right now running are the Paralympics. And so my hashtag is going for both of them. And on screen, you will see the details. There's still time to join in. I did a page from Rooms of Wonder by Joanna Basford, and I selected one of the, uh, it's a double page spread actually. And so this is what it looked like beforehand. Uh, and I thought that this kind of looked like a uh, old time uh, French motif kind of wallpaper. So I thought that would be good. The colors that I used were the Olympic ring colors. And then this center uh, motif here is actually the Canadian Paralympic uh, symbol. So these here, right here, uh, are the Paralympic symbols. And this is for Canada. And yes, 
This is our symbol uh, that represents Paralympics. And in support of the Paralympics going on right now, uh, this is my page. I do have uh, pictures submitted that I'm going to show in September. So you have until September the 8th or the closing ceremonies of the Paralympics uh, to submit your page. And uh, we'll have a gallery of everybody's pictures at that time. But it has been fun to see people from all over the world participating. And uh, yeah, so this is my page that I am submitted. I used acrylic paint for this. I use some gouache and I use Stedler pigment pens for the rest of the background. And again, I used the colors from the Olympic rings and then uh, Canada. I'm pleased with how this turned out and I'm really happy to see uh, the pictures that have been uh, posted on Instagram so far. And you can check them out uh, by looking up the hashtag Olympic coloring 2024. And just make sure you're spelling coloring uh, with the OU. And that's my page from Joanna Bassford's Rooms of Wonder. Next book uh, I'm coloring in or sh sharing with you is uh, Chris Raniac's Morning Scribbles, Frogs and Friends. This is volume two and I've got two pages done in this book this month. Amanda Colors and Disney Meg's Coloring host a group color along in this book every month. So this is August selection and I used some Studio 71 markers that I'm, alcohol markers that I'm trying to use up. I used some uh, Mod Podge Extreme on the wings. And I also used some on the uh, eye. So yeah, and the colors that I selected, because you'd think this is not normal colors for this, and that's because I participated in Amanda Colors uh, AC Palette Challenge, and this was palette number 318. So that's how come I have a uh, pink and purple uh, frog butterfly kind of thing. So I'm like, well, it's not something realistic, so I might as well go for it. And I actually had quite a bit of fun with the colors. So um, that is the third uh, color palette that I use for this month. So I'm definitely getting use of my uh, coloring. And then last month I was busy with one book July, so I didn't participate. So I was catching up and I did this fun page. And this is a frog with a fish kite. So I'm like, okay, that's also a little bit different. So I've got some treasure gold metallic paint. Uh, some gel pens. I used the 71 studio markers, some treasure gold paint, dual hybrid metallic, and some chubby crayons. So the crayons are this area up here, and these were a crayon that is water soluble. So I was testing them out and seeing what they were like. And then I used, to kind of tie in uh, why I had blue up at the top, I also put some blue down below in a washi tape and it says make a wish, make a wish. And I thought that was appropriate for a frog with a fish kite because he must be making some type of wish. So that was my uh, fun page from Chris Raniac's Frogs and Friends. Thank you to Amanda and Disney Megs for hosting a fun group color along. Well, Finally, this book is making an appearance. This is a huge book. It is the Peter Rabbit coloring book. I have it tilted to uh, avoid the glare from the ring light. And it is by Beatrix Potter and illustrated by Charles Stan Stantor. Uh, this book has been on my books to complete list forever. And it is a book that is currently following up, falling apart. So what I have decided to do is I'm going to spiral bind it once I'm done because I think that will help because as you can see the pages are falling out. So it's a huge book so I do need to stay all the way out. Uh, this page had been started but wasn't completed so I completed this page and I used uh, ink tents, some graphitint, some Stedler pink pens and some pit pens. So this is a, a not thick paper, but
but not super thin either. Um, you can't, uh, you do need to be careful because basically it's a, it's a reading book. So I don't want things bleeding through to this side. So I am being careful of using items, but I like how he turned out. At the beginning of the book, they do have pictures of what all the pages uh, look like in the original book. And I have been trying to follow along with the similar colors and stuff, just so, because uh, I plan on giving this to my grandchild when they uh, ever become a real thing. Um, so I don't have any grandchildren right now, so I'm just future prepping. And so, yeah, so there's this one that I finished and then this one was already done. And then this is the next page I did. And again, I used some ink tents, the pit pens, some Stadler pigment pens, some Spectrum Noir sage and linen. So I really liked the sage and the linen colors. So it's a gooseberry uh, bush. So, and it has a little bit of sparkle to it with these. So this is the linen color. And then the green sage is the leaves. And then, yeah. And then I've got a little bit of uh, blue also, and there's some sparkle on his tears. So just a little bit of sparkle. And again, no bleed through. So I have been getting a lot of use of my Stadler pigment pens. And uh, because the paper on here just isn't great. I was using polychromos at the very beginning. Um, and the it was just a lot, a lot of work. These are huge pages and uh, wasn't really happy. So then I switched to some ink tents and I was just learning with those. So we're just kind of learning as we go on this paper. Um, but yeah, at least I am back coloring in this book. And again, that is Peter Rabbit's uh, by Beatrix Potter and uh, happy to be back into it. All right, my last book is this book. And all I'm going to tell you is that I have completed day one. So day one is the candy shop. And last week you would have seen my first episode in what is going to be a whip series. So every Wednesday and then in November, probably Wednesday and Friday, because we'll have to get a few more pages done. Uh, I am taking a more relaxed approach to my holiday coloring. Uh, typically in the month of December, I was doing one video a day, uh, coloring a page a day and getting everything filmed and upped. And that's just a lot of stress. And there's enough stress going on in the month that um, coloring shouldn't be part of that. So I have decided that I still want to do this book, but I want to do it at a more reasonable pace. And I'm inviting you to join me on that excursion. You can do one page. Uh, you have the next three months to get that one page done, or you can do multiple pages and submit them. So I encourage you to go and watch that video if you haven't already seen it. There will be a playlist um, that uh, they all end up in, so they will be easy to find. Each thumbnail will have a number on it, and so that will correspond to the page number that we're doing. So I hope to see more of you coloring in this book. It's been out for a couple of years. Uh, this book I picked up on sale at Book Outlet, so that's an online bookstore. Uh, it was still there as of filming today, so if you're looking for this book, it is a larger book than I anticipated, uh, so that was uh, part of my surprise when I got it. It's uh, also a fun book, and I hope to uh, enjoy coloring it at a less stressful pace. So one completed from here but you will see it in December. And that's what's gonna happen every month is I will have some pages completed that I won't be showing you on this because we're waiting until December to reveal them. So that's it for today. I hope that was 19 pages, which is plenty for me. Uh, coloring, like I said, should be fun and relaxing. And if it's stressful, then uh, that kind of takes some of the enjoyment out of it. So I look forward to September, which we have Space Timber going on, hosted by a bunch of uh, fellow YouTube uh, colorists. 
I want to participate in that. We have the Coloring Olympic 2024 that ends September the 8th, so I'll be doing that. And then we also have my regular videos, which is the coloring the gemstones of the birth month, and we also have the zodiac animals, and we have flags. I also didn't include uh, my flag book. Uh, I'm doing flags of the world every month, but I don't include that in my completed pages, um, and I don't count that as one of the pages I've done, but there were 12 flags this month. So it has been a busy month, and I think it's been a productive month. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that if you want to join me in the rest of the year and follow along all these different series that I've got going, that you consider subscribing. And until next video, I hope you are having a colorful and creative week, and I will see you in the next video. All right, take care, my friends. Happy coloring. Bye-bye.